Good day and God bless. Apostle Ken Smith here coming to you live to just share some tidbits from the Word of God. Amen. Just to share. Um, what a great day we have. God is good. He is awesome. He is blessing. It is a good day to be a child of the King. Well, let's just do this. We want to run quickly into the book of John chapter 21. Again, the book of John chapter 21. Um, there are some things that's taken place and we just want to kind of correlate them to some things that we can see even now. Um, Jesus at this particular time, it was, it is after the crucifixion, but it's prior to his ascension on high. Uh, Jesus has been, if you will, been seen at this particular time by different individuals, by some of his disciples. And so, um, at this particular time, we take forth in John 21 verse one, after these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias, and on this wise show he himself. There were together Simon Peter, Thomas called Didymus, and Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, and the sons of Zebedee, and two other of his disciples. Simon Peter said unto them, I go a fishing. And this is where I want to really get us into, because if you recall, the, some of the disciples had been fishermen. It is in this place and time that, uh, how would you say, there were some things that's taken place and uh, the disciples are at this particular point. Jesus has been crucified. Again, many of them have seen him up to this point. You go back into chapter 20, you'll find that they had, he had made a sense of visitation with them. And so um, they're also at a point that it's like, the normal thing they had been accustomed to walking and talking and being with Jesus, now things had come to a place they were about to change. You know, I, I don't know at this particular point when, when Peter says, I'm going fishing. If he was going fishing because it was a place where he says, hey, this is where I can go to relax. Was he going fishing just to get away? You know, with all the things that are happening now, sometimes what you want to do is just get away. You're, you're, you're concerned about what your normal is, and if you will, I want to get back to the normal, but I know it's not going to be the same anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm sure they were at the crest of a particular thing of recognizing things are never going to be the same. The way we had walked with Jesus and talked with him daily, those, those particular things that Jesus shared with us from moment to moment, we don't get those anymore. Can I just say it like this? They were probably pausing to, to kind of wonder for a second, what are we going to do about our daily dose of Jesus? Now, this is what I might say to us today, going fishing. Some of us have gone fishing because we haven't understood about how we're going to get our daily dose of Jesus. Some of us have gone fishing. Is it to relax? Is it just to do something because I don't know what else to do? Simon Peter said, I'm going fishing. Well, suddenly the others chimed in. We're going with you. You know, in the midst of things that are happening right now, many people have decided, I don't know what to do. What are you doing? I'll just join into whatever you're doing because I'm not sure if things are going to be the same. I can't go into worship and fellowship like I once did. Well, because of it, here it is on a Sunday morning. You're wondering where some people are at. So we're supposed to be social distancing, if that's what you call it. But at the same time, it's like some of us have gone fishing. We're, we're, we've gone away from Christ. We've gone away from the sense of being in the place of the spirit. Yeah. It's because we don't know what else to do. We don't know where we're going. We don't know what's happening. We're looking for a normal and trying to create something. These disciples said, we'll go with you. I want to tell you today, some of us have gone different ways, but if you're inviting somebody to join in with you, you invited somebody to come along with you, not to go fishing the way they were going fishing, 
But is anybody in that place where they want to join in to a place in the spirit to say, let's go deeper? Let's go to a place in Christ that we haven't been. And I don't want to just stop there because there's a host of different things that go forth. And one of the things that we have to look at again is that Jesus has been showing up at different times. They keep having encounters with Christ. Man, in the midst of all that was going on, they were still having encounters. They were looking for, I call it their daily dose of Jesus. They were afraid of missing out. They were afraid in terms of what's next, what's to become of us. Well, what I want to say to you, you may be in that same place. What's to become of me? But at the same point, like I say, Jesus keeps coming in. He Thank keeps Lord. coming for what they might have an experience with him. Well, well watch this. Just, just watch this for a moment. Because some of you may be saying, well, wait a minute. In the midst of this, it doesn't look like Christ is showing his hand. It doesn't look like the Spirit of God is moving. It doesn't look like the church is strong. It doesn't look like spiritually that anything's happening. <laughs> Can I say to you, maybe it's time for us to have an experience with the Lord. Amen. Maybe Amen. it's time for you and I to have a visitation. Mm -hmm. You know, instead of waiting for Jesus to minister to us, mm -hmm. let's just minister to the Lord. Amen. Amen. In, in verse 4, but when the morning was now come, because you know, what happened is they, they went on, they went fishing, and they entered into the ship. That's what it says in verse 3. And that night they caught nothing. Yeah, interesting. This has happened before. And that night they caught nothing. But when the morning was now come, guess who was on the shore? And, and here's the thing about it. Can I tell you this? Jesus was on the shore, but they didn't know who he was. The same one they were looking for, the same one they've been spending, had been spending time for, the same thing they're still looking for, their daily dose of Jesus, mm -hmm. they still didn't know him when he showed up. Amen. Can I tell you, Jesus. right now, in the midst of everything that's happening with us, some of you still don't know that Jesus is still showing up. Mm -hmm. Just because you can't enter into the place that you've been accustomed to going, does not mean that we cannot fellowship by the Spirit. It does not mean that we as a church, a body of believers, can't still come together to pray. It does not mean that we cannot do certain things to see the Holy Spirit move. Oh, yes. Thank you, Lord. Man, we need to touch bases with one another. We need to join in on some level with some things. Amen. It's not just, a, if I call it, just on a Sunday morning or a Wednesday afternoon. We need to get to the place that we can do some things where the Spirit of God can move through us. Amen. We need to have an experience with the Lord. We need to have a Jesus encounter. We need to say, let's get together on a different, different accord to do something that the Spirit of God can be glorified. Amen. But now, now, remember, they went fishing. You know, remember, they were fishermen. They've been accustomed to fishing. You know, you know it's kind of like us when things don't go just the way we would like. Sometimes we return to what's comfortable. Amen. Can I tell you, some of us have looked in, in this hour for something that we find the sense of normalcy or comfortability in. If I can say this, we need to have an encounter. Man, nudge somebody. You know you ever, how we used to be in church and, you know, a word would come forth and say, you know, that was, it was like, that's for you. You just kind of nudge the person next to you. That's for you. Glory to God. I'm going to nudge myself because we need to have a God encounter. Amen. We need to come to the place now that wherever we're at, that we're going to experience the Lord. And while we're experiencing him, I'm going to call somebody else to join in. It's time for us to join in and do something where we can see something happen. You know, we need to pray one for another in this time. We use these phones for so many things. Why not that? Anyway, get back. Now, so here's this thing. I don't know if this is making sense, but here's what's happening. They've gone fishing. Nothing's happened. You know, if you're fisher, if you're going fishing, you expect to catch something. They didn't even recognize the master. They didn't recognize the one they've been walking with. Jesus was standing on the shore. <laughs> See, and in verse 
5, Jesus said to them, children, have you any meat? They answered him, no. He's asking them, do you have any substance? You, you, you went fishing. Mm -hmm. You went fishing. Mm -hmm. Did you catch anything? You've been praying. Mm -hmm. Have you seen, how you say, have you seen results from your prayer? Yes. You've been reading your word. Mm -hmm. Do you have substance mm -hmm. from what you've been partaking of? Yes. Something should be happening. Mm -hmm. right. There should be something that's going forth with us. Mm -hmm. Some type of experience mm -hmm. that we can be speaking of where the spirit of the Lord has moved in the course of our hearts. Mm -hmm. yeah, can I say this? Is there substance in terms of the time that you've been spending just you and the Lord? Has a change occurred in your attitude, your acts, yes. your mindset? Mm -hmm. Has anything happened? Have you had an experience with the Lord during this time? Whew. Well, if you like the disciples, they went fishing and mm -hmm. didn't catch anything. Mm -hmm. They did it all night long. Mm -hmm. Man, we've been at this for a moment. Has anything happened during your consecration time with you and Christ? Have you really had an experience, a God encounter? Has anything happened at, at this point in time? I don't know if this makes sense to you. So what are you trying to say? I'm trying to say, you know, because I keep hearing everybody on the other side of this, is that everybody's looking for something, but nobody wants to sit still long enough because when you fish all night and you ca haven't caught anything, one thing about it, you had to be patient to stay there all night. Mm -hmm. Can I say this? Most of us have quit in the midst. We've stopped while it's yet going forward. Can I tell you this? God is speaking to us even now that he's blessing, that he's moving in this hour. You, yet many people are complaining because they don't see certain things. I want to encourage you at this point, don't stop doing what God's called you to do. Don't stop at this point because you don't see what you think you should see. Keep going. Amen. Keep going. Be patient. Wait on the Lord. Yeah. It may not be to your liking. It may be not seem like it's advantageous to you, but don't give up just yet. Right. To fish all night takes a little something. To fish all night. I don't, I don't know if they didn't have even a bite, a nipple, something to ensure that fish were even there. I want to tell you, many of you are going through your own crisis right now. And everything around you may not look like it should. Some of you financially, this is rocking your world. Mm -hmm. Some people are even concerned because financially, you know, the place where they're living mm -hmm. You know, the rent and all those things, it's like suddenly the income's not the same. And you're concerned that God is still saying, I'm going to bless you in the midst. And you're looking around saying, how can it be? Well, I want to tell you, be patient and wait on the Lord. If God's spoken, you're going to have what I call a God encounter. Well, let's not stop there. Jesus comes to these that didn't even know him. Can I say the Lord is probably speaking to some of you right now? And even when he's speaking, you're saying, I'm not sure this is God. Right. Jesus comes and he tells them, you don't have any substance. You don't have any meat. You didn't catch anything. Their answer is no. Jesus says, Cast your net. Now, let's just pause for a minute. You fished all night. You've been praying for your blessing. You've been looking for God to move. And while you've been praying, you haven't heard anything. But now God says something that's so simplistic. How would I say this? Because we're always looking for God to say something that's so deep. We're looking for, you know, it's like I want God to show up. I want to hear the voice of God. But he doesn't sound like the way I thought he did. You know, I don't hear that booming voice. It is the Lord. God doesn't always speak to us in that fashion. Amen. God may speak in a small, subtle voice. Oh, yes. And because he does, you and I may feel like God has not shown up. <laughs> He's going to speak something to you 
that in itself is simplistic on the surface. Can I say this? Man, the way man operates, you know, have you ever gone to somebody when you had a problem and they can give you these all these great philosophies? They can just go forth with all these ideas. Mm -hmm. You know, man has a lot of answers. He has a lot of intellect, a lot of things that he says. And unfortunately, a lot of the things that he offers you, solutions, they just don't work. They seem so profound and so deep, but they just don't work. <clears throat> Jesus, on the other hand, will often speak to us, and it's not complicated what he says. It's something very small, seemingly insignificant. And because of it, most of the time, we don't want to use it, mm -hmm. but it always works. Mm -hmm. Jesus says to these individuals that have fished all night, Fishermen that know how to fish, that have fished all night, Jesus says to them, cast your nets on the right side. Now, can I just throw this to you? Because it's kind of like on the right side. What was wrong with the left side? You know, it's kind of like someone saying to you, I woke up on the wrong side of the bed. Well, I just got to throw something at you because what's the right side and what's the wrong side? Well, he says to them, cast your nets on the right side, on the right side of the boat. Well, why were the fish suddenly hiding? You know, the fish wouldn't go on the left side, but they'd go on the right side. Come on, use your heads. Think about it. God says, just cast your net on the right side. We didn't fish all night, Jesus. Now, here you come. I'm looking for an experience. Come on, anybody here looking for something from God? Wanting God to move in a miraculous fashion? And then God speaks. It's not the deep thing you were thinking of. It's just simplistic. Was it the way you thought it would be? It's just simple. All he says is cash your net on the right side. What was Jesus wanting? All he wants from you is obedience. He just wants you by faith to obey. Can I tell you where you at? You don't have to get to figure it out. Amen. You don't have to worry how it's going to pan out. All he wants you to do is simply obey. Thank you, Amen. That just means follow directions. Amen. That just means do what he says. Mm -hmm. Wow. You know what's hard about that? It's because you're looking for God to say something deep. You're looking for God suddenly. I, well, God, you know, um, how is the money going to come? How is this going to happen? All he says to these disciples that haven't caught fish, that are still looking for their daily, do daily dose of Jesus, he simply says, cast your nets on the right side. Folks, if we're going to be fishing this morning, we're going to experience some things in a deeper water, in a deeper context for what God has for us. We're going to have to obey the voice of God. We're going to have to do something that you and I didn't think we would have to do. And by faith, we're going to have to take him at his word. For some, it may be simply be that God is calling you to a place he just wants you to pray. Maybe he wants you to call somebody up and pray. Just pray. Maybe he wants you to be still. Just be still. You don't have to figure it out. You don't have to understand it. Just obey. <laughs> this is funny. He says, cast your net on the right side of the ship and you shall find. Wow. Can you imagine that? We have fished all night. Now Jesus is telling me if I put my net on the right side, I'm going to find something. Yeah. I don't know about you, but already I got my doubts. I got my concerns. I've been here all night long. I've been praying. I don't know about you, but I've been praying in the midst of the pandemic. I've been praying for specific things. I'm trying to hear God. Sometimes I haven't heard anything. Sometimes he says something that's so simple that it's got to be something more. It has to be something more. You know, we're prone to believe that we have to do more in order for things to happen. More work, 
That's just how we operate. God just says, by faith, take me at my word. Amen. Guys, I'm not trying to be difficult, just trying to make it simple. By faith, accept the word of God. By faith, obey. Well, watch this. So, they cast their nets on the right side. And they were able to draw out a multitude. Wait a minute. The Bible says they drew out a multitude of fish. And they've been fishing all night. Obviously, from the left side, <coughs> the wrong side. Man, it didn't make a difference where they were fishing at on the boat. They have been casting their nets on the left side, the wrong side. No matter what side, you know, it would have made a difference because I'm sure if they had been casting from the right side, Jesus would have told them, cast from the left. Mm -hmm. If they had been casting from the front side, mm -hmm. he'd have said, cast from the back. All he was trying to show them, he was in control. Amen. Can I tell you this? No matter what's happening, he's controlling everything. You, oh my God, what did you just say? You mean the fish of the sea obey Christ? Man, Jesus was on the shore. Jesus was on the shore when he called them and had to them and asked them, Hey, you have any substance? Do you have any meat? No. Jesus knew where the fish were at. Hmm. Can you imagine this? Jesus has already spoken to the fish, told the fish, stay away from their nets. <laughs> All night long, they caught nothing. Jesus spoke and said, cast on the right side. You don't have to look in it to know that Jesus is in the mix. And he calls the fish to the right side to fill up their... It's not even work when you obey. Amen. You just got to obey. The work for you is obeying the small voice of God, even if it doesn't make sense to you. Amen. Can I just throw something at you? Because when we're called to the place to act according to the Spirit of God, we're usually trying to figure it out and we want to add to. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a recipe. <clears throat> I don't know if this has ever occurred to you, but if you've had a recipe before, somebody gave you the recipe, and then after you made your particular item, it didn't taste like theirs. And you say, well, did you follow the recipe? Well, I added a few things. Okay. Well, when we start dissecting what you added, we can find out why there's a difference in the taste. Mm -hmm. Well, I thought this would make it a little better. I thought this would enhance it. Can I tell you, God does not need you and I to enhance what he's calling us to do. Amen. We just simply need to follow and obey. Now, can I tell you this? What God may speak to you may not be the same thing he speaks to somebody else. Mm -hmm. right. I believe this morning he's calling some of us into a deeper aspect of the place that he wants. Mm -hmm. He's calling us to walk in a place that we've never walked before. He's calling some of you to fish and call some of your friends to fish with you. But the thing about it is that you have to obey the voice of God. And what he's given you may not be what he's given your neighbor, so you can't watch your neighbor in order to see how to do it. Amen. <laughs> this is comical to me. Because it's like God is calling you to the place that you might throw yours your net onto the right side. Tell somebody the right side. What is this for me? You may have been praying. God may be about to change how you pray. God may be about to change how you're speaking, how you're calling for. He may be about to revolutionize your own faith. What are you saying with that? Take your faith to a whole nother place simply by what he's saying for you to do. Simply obey. Just follow don't add to it. Don't put your own spin on it. Just do what God called. See, yes, a lot of us are following, but we're following the wrong people. We're following to the wrong places. Now, I believe that these disciples went back to their old thing. They knew how to fish. <coughs> they went back to fishing. 
But even in that, Jesus wanted to show them that what you used to do, it's not even going to work. The way you used to do it, that's not going to get it done anymore. Amen. You're going to have to hear me. You have to hear me in the midst because even if you do it your way, it's not going to work. Oh. Let's do this. Let's do this. Let's just look at this for Paul for a second. Look at something because it's interesting to me. Jesus has taken these disciples even to the point he's led them and they don't know they're being led. He's on the shore and speaking to them and giving them information, giving them insight. Can I tell you the Lord wants to give you and I some insight today? He wants to give you some revelation. He wants to move you. I'm getting ready to close, but watch this because anybody here want a Jesus encounter? Anyone, anybody want to encounter Christ? In verse 7, therefore the disciples whom Jesus loved said unto Peter, it is the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he began to just tie his coat around him because he was naked. And he cast himself into the water. And the other disciples came in a little, came in a little ship for they were not far from land, but as it was, you know, they were dragging the nets. All they caught, they were dragging the nets because they had so much. When they got close to the shore, they saw that Jesus had already got the fire going. Jesus had spoken to them from the shore, told them where to cast their nets. Jesus had all, listen to this, Jesus already got the fire going. He wasn't on the boat with them, but he got the fire going. Why did he get the fire going? In anticipation of the meat they were about to participate in, partake of. Can I say this to you? You don't know where you're going. You don't know how it's going to happen. You don't know how provision comes. But Jesus is your Jehovah driver. Thank you, Lord. He is the Lord that supplies. You don't have to know how everything's going to come in, into place. But I want to let you know that God has already prepared everything. He's already got it ready for you. you I don't know if this is making Amen. sense to you. It may be difficult where you're at right now. But you've got to know that you're getting ready to have. Can I use the word a God encounter? Thank you. There's something that's getting ready to change because this Lord's getting ready to speak something into you that has not been spoken before. God's getting ready to call you to a deeper place in him, but it's simply by obedience to his word. It's a simple thing. It's a simple act. Are you willing to go? Are you willing to take another step? Can I tell you something? You know, it's just, just some things that God has been doing. Somebody asked me, why aren't you standing and preaching? Well, I'm preaching from a different platform. The Spirit of the Lord gave to me to sit and not stand. Well, it's not because I can't stand, but you know what? In the sense of sitting, I found the patience to do something that I've never done before. For me, I'm usually pacing. If anybody's familiar with me, I love to move. I love to walk. Sitting before the camera has caused me to do something that I wouldn't do any other time. I've had to sit, be patient, let the Lord do something in me, it wasn't that I couldn't walk before, but uh, he wasn't moving in me before. But this way, he's caused me, I want you to be still because there's something I'm doing. And it means that he's going to be doing something different later. But it's like for me, it's an act to sit still. I don't know about you, but it takes patience on my part. You know, because sometimes, you know, if I'm, I don't know about you, but when I get in line at the grocery store or someplace, Pastor Wayne, I'm never still. I'm like, I got two feet going. I got to stand right there. I can't go too far, but I'm always moving. I want to tell you simple things. God may be speaking to you. It doesn't have to be what you think, but God is speaking some simple Amen. things, simple acts because of something that he's getting ready to do that's far greater. An experience, an encounter that you're about to have. I want to tell you it's not about your intellect. It's not about your feelings, your intuition. It's about obedience to the Spirit of God. Amen. God's calling you to a place. You may not understand it. You can't figure it out. I can't say that enough. You won't be able to figure out all the steps. All he wants you to do is follow what he's saying. Thank you. you don't get to add to the steps. Thank you, Lord. you know, it's kind of like this to show you what I'm talking about. Sometimes, you know, we add to stuff. You know, when God says forgive, you ever heard this? I'll forgive, but I won't forget. You're adding to his recipe. 
forgive, let it go, give it to God. It's things that God's calling for right now to take you to a place that you and I have never been. Anybody willing for, to, to, to experience? Want a God encounter? If you want this God encounter, God's already preparing the fire because he's already provided the substance for you and I. Whatever it's going to take, God's already provided. How we get there. Now listen, I, don't, I didn't go into this, but you, can you imagine what would have happened if the disciples had said at this point in time, throw it on the right side. Man, we fished all night. If the fish, if when I cast my net, you don't got to think about this. If when I cast my net, the fish don't come under the boat and get in this net, is it going to make a difference if we cast it on the right side? I don't think so. Guys, I'm going to tell you, for many of you, you're probably thinking, whatever it is, it don't take all that. It doesn't require for me to do this. God wants your simple act of obedience. Amen. Amen. By faith, Amen. receive what he's calling you to do. Amen. Don't try to think it through. Don't try to think it out. Man, I know this is hard for a lot of us, but there's some things that God has given you that all he wants you to do is just do what he said. Amen. Nothing more, nothing else. Simplistic. Just do it. In this place and time, you're getting ready to encounter God. But in your encounter by the Spirit, it is really a sense of acting on the Word of God. Amen. I know that, that's really deep, right? <laughs> doesn't sound deep. You probably think it has to be more. And if God's telling you that something's going to happen, and you and I, if you're like me, you're looking and saying, hey, you're looking at your watch and you're looking at your calendar and you're looking at different things, but if God said it, he's going to do what he said. Right. You're going to have to patiently wait on the Lord. Nothing's going to happen because you try to make it happen. Right. It's a simple act Amen. of obedience. Amen. It's not a matter of your thoughts, not a matter of your feelings. It's not a matter of what you think in this context. It's about following whatever God is saying. Yes. Man, ladies, gentlemen, Men, women, boys, girls, listen to this. God's calling us to a new place. Say it's new for some, old for others, but no matter what, God's calling for greater revelation. Mm -hmm. Make it simple. Be bold about that which God has given you. Do it the way he's called you to do it. But God's calling in this hour for you to step by faith into another place, another dimension on the right side. Will you and I go fishing with Christ at the helm? Will we go fishing that even when he's standing on the shore and speaking to us, giving us direction, can I tell you as God is speaking the direction, he's already made the provision for what's transpired. Thank you, Lord. He's already preparing for what's going to happen. He's already made way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he's already made a way. Listen, you don't go to make a fire in anticipation of somebody cooking something unless you expect that they're going to catch something to eat. Can I just be real with you? There's no point in, you know, because I know at home, there's no point in turning the microwave on. You don't even have to do it. There's no, no point in pre what's it, preheating the oven if there's nothing going in. In anticipation of what God is already going to do, He's already set things in place. Thank you, Lord. But before you get to Thank that you, place, Lord. the place setting, God says you have to do what I'm calling you to do mm -hmm. by faith. Thank you, Lord. Tell somebody I'm going to let go of my ideas, let go of my trying to add to God's recipe. I'm going to go fishing and have an experience, an encounter by the Spirit of God, simply by obedience to what God is calling for. Anybody got patience? Well, we're going to have to patiently wait on him. I don't know if this makes sense to you, but let's do this. Let's pray. I don't know who you are, where you're at, but I know this is speaking to somebody. Somebody, they're the Spirit of God, is saying it's time to rise up. To someone, God is saying it's time for you simply to kneel down. And I want to tell you there's different ways to bow. Sometimes God wants you to bow on your knees. Sometimes it's this mind of yours that's going to have to bow 
to what the Spirit of God is saying. Amen. Listen, some of us, God wants to speak out. Some of us, he wants to be quiet. Amen. I had to be real. Some of us are talking too much. We can't hear anything. Mm -hmm. Some of us are not talking enough right. because we won't say what he said. Mm -hmm. Some of us, God is calling to the place just simply to be bold. Some of us, he doesn't need you to be bold like you're doing in these times. He just wants you to be still. Be still and know that he's God. Let the God, let the God, let God be God. Let him come forth. Let him show his power and might. You don't have to do it. You don't have to cause it to happen. You just have to walk in the place that he's causing you to walk. Amen. Folks, I want to tell you, God wants you to encounter him in a different realm, a different way, in a different place. Each of us the same, but different. By the Spirit, obedience. Well, can I say this one more time? It's going to happen. The Word of God's going to come, but He wants you to obey the Word by faith. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Man, when is it going to happen? By faith. You have to trust what He's saying that it's so, and what He's saying to you that He's doing it in Jesus' name. I'm telling you, I know it's real. I know it's time. I know that God wants you to have an experience like none other. Will you just be in this place where we're at right now? I'm sitting, but I'm asking you to stand in a place of agreement with me. Just reach your covenant hand towards this, this camera and let's touch and agree that by the Spirit, Father, I'm thanking you, Thank you. that just like the disciples encountered you, in that time that we're going to encounter you right now. Father, I thank you that in the midst of everything that's happening in the earth realm, that you cause the spirit to move in us yeah. and reach and touch us where we're at. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you speak to us individually and then as a joint consecration or, cons <laughs> excuse me, just calling us together in this place to be joined as one by the Spirit that we too might hear and obey the voice of God. Yes, I know, Father God, that you're going to speak to some. And can I say this? That you're going to speak to some. We're looking for the church to open up, but the church must still operate even in the midst of these times. Well, how do we do? Can I tell you this? There's some things that behind the scenes you still need to give. You still need to continue to deal. Trust God in the midst of this. He may be calling you to give. I believe that it's in this season, in this time, that as you give, God's going to surpass what you've given. He's going to bless you. He's going to cause your meal barrel to never run empty. Ah, wherever you're at, if it's your heart, if you're lonely, God's going to cause you to have what you need. Thank He's going Lord. to fill yeah. those voids. Oh, yeah. You're getting ready to have an encounter just by one Thank word you. the Lord's going to speak and your obedience to the word of God. You don't have to figure it out. Mm -hmm. Just trust him. Mm -hmm. Just trust him. For your household, God is going to move in your house. Mm -hmm. uh, in your business, God is going to move in your business. Father, I thank you for what's happening now. Spiritually, abundantly, that you're moving on your people, that you're speaking a word to cause us to have kingdom understanding. I thank you for what's transpiring now in Jesus' mighty name. I call it done. I call it done in Jesus' name. You said your word will not return to you void. And so I thank you that the word will accomplish what you sent it to do. Amen. And so we glorify you, Father, that now a change has come in Jesus' name, you, that this is a time that even as we go fishing, that for souls, that someone's coming to the kingdom yeah. that didn't know you because of obedience by the Spirit. I thank yeah. you, and we call it done in Jesus' mighty name. Now, brothers and sisters, I thank you that, that you've heard the word of God, and I want to tell you the word works if you'll work the word. So you get ready. Brother Anthony's going to come. He's going to come and share some things with you. Amen. We just thank God as he comes. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. All right. Thank you for that.
If you guys feel led to give, if you guys were blessed from this message today, and you guys feel led to give, we now have three ways that you can give. The first way is through Givelify. So simply go to our website at agapecommunityfellowship.com, scroll towards the bottom of the page, and you'll see the Givelify link. Go ahead and click on that link, and it's going to take you to our Givelify page where you can uh, give through Givelify. The second way to pay or to give is through Zelle. So if you have a smartphone, you have uh, your bank account on that smartphone, just go to that bank account, scroll down and look for the, the Zelle app. Um, then just go to Agape International for US at yahoo.com, look for Agape Community Fellowship and you can give through Zelle. The third way to give is simply send a check or money order to P.O. Box 1222, Pomona, California, 91767. So if you, felt, if you feel led to give today, we want to say thank you, and we want to pray over that today. So Heavenly Father, we come to you to tell you thank you for this day, thank you for this hour, thank you for the message that has gone forth today. Lord, we thank you for your son Jesus, who you sent to die for our sins who rose again and gave us our salvation. Lord, we pray that all the things that are going on in the world, we still have the heart to give to you in this hour. We thank you for all you're doing and for, for being with us as we stand in the gap for all the things that are, are going on today. Lord, we, we pray that you bless the, the, the givings that we given to you and for those who had it in their heart to give we ask you to bless them for those who wanted to give but could not we ask you to bless them as well we thank you we praise your holy name in jesus name we pray amen, amen. thank you guys